Hello, everybody, and welcome to this, the second webinar in our series, SOA in the Digital Age. The first webinar in the series, Developments in SOA, discussed how SOA met the challenge of integration between multiple independent applications and technologies with proprietary interfaces. From the beginning, it has given enterprises agility so that they can easily work with new business partners. But even in the early days of SOA, more was expected. SOA enthusiasts believed that the principle of service orientation would transform businesses and that its application to information technology would give business executives more direct control of the creation of IT solutions. Enterprises would then have a different form of agility, the ability to implement new business ideas easily and quickly. This expectation was not at first realized. SOA often remained within the IT department and became known as a style of IT architecture rather than as a business transformation tool. But the desire of business people to control IT solution development or more directly has increased since those days and a new kind of person has emerged within the modern enterprise, the business technologist. Uh, who works in a business department and understands the business but also has the technical expertise to create IT solutions to support it. So the time has come to revisit SOA and see whether its early expectations can now be fulfilled. And that is the topic for this webinar. I will be facilitating the discussion. I'm Chris Harding, the Director for Interoperability at The Open Group. And we have a distinguished panel. Dr. Ali Arsanjani is uh, a distinguished engineer and CTO, Smarter Process, ECM, SOA, and Emerging Technologies with IBM. Um, he is a leader of the Smarter Process Method community and the SOA community within IBM. And he's been a, a leader of SOA methodology since the early days. Marty Newhart is an SOA and application integration architect in HP Enterprise Service Applications Business Services. Uh, and he's also a co-chair for the Open Group SOA for Business Technology Project. Uh, and he contributes to our SOA working group. Uh, within HP, Martin is the chair of the Global Technical Councils for the Integration and Middleware and Presentation Suites on the HP Edge platform. He also teaches web application development at Binghamton University. Gerard Peters is a managing consultant with Capgemini in the Netherlands. Um, he studied originally business econometrics, uh, operations research at Tilburg University, and joined a Dutch predecessor of Capgemini. Um, he, uh, has been involved with a number of open group activities and is currently involved in the SOA for Business Technology work group at the open group. Sundar Ramanathan is a manager IT advisory with Erst and Young. He's a BE of the Indian Institute of Science of Bangalore and an MBA uh, of Wayne State University, Detroit, Michigan, in the United States. Uh, he has been an enterprise and uh, integration architect at uh, a number of major uh, corporations uh, and also a senior database product developer at, uh, uh, at Infomix. He's a co-chair of the SOA for Business Technology Project uh, and has contributed to other projects within the open group. And last but not least, uh, Shah Sandbiglari uh, is a lead technical architect uh, in the Chief Technology Office of American Express Technology. Uh, he is an enterprise architecture practitioner who has led the development of several enterprise frameworks at AET. Um, and uh, prior to joining Amex, Shah held uh, a number of uh, titles of staff programmer infrastructure architect and senior architect at several companies. 
he's uh, represented American Express in the Open Group for several years uh, and brings a real end user perspective to this discussion. So I've mentioned the SOA for Business Technology project. This is a project of our SOA work group uh, whose aim is to develop guidelines and taxonomy based on capabilities, service categorization and metrics to align SOA and business with a mechanism to assess, improve, and express SOA in business terms, which is a very relevant uh, to our topic for discussion today, but it's not the real topic for discussion. The topic that we will be discussing today is quite simply how service-oriented architecture enables enterprises to achieve their business objectives. So with that introduction, uh, I'd like to start and uh, ask the panelists the first question. I'm going to ask uh, a number of questions and then we will have a pause uh, for questions from the audience. First question, and Shah, can I ask you to, to take this question first? Um, could you just start us off with some specific examples of SOA delivering business value, please? Thanks, Chris. Uh, well, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Uh, based on where you are, uh, let me start by saying that it is a pleasure to be here and participate in this webinar. Uh, thanks for uh, arranging this, Chris, and the open group. Uh, so let me start by saying that uh, <coughs> a prime example at Amex is leveraging SOA for increasing return on investment. Uh, so at Amex, we are continually working to increase the efficiency and cost effectiveness uh, of our technology delivery, you know, to help drive increased business and customer value by getting uh, our product and services to market faster and with higher quality. Now with SOA, when services are reused across different lines of business, platforms, partners, and or applications, this definitely drives faster to sp speak to market, uh, increase cost effectiveness, and higher quality, uh, resulting, of course, uh, to higher ROI. And, of course, that in turn drives increased value for our partners in American Express business and by extension to our partners' customers. Okay, so um, American Express is, is, is finding, I guess, is, is deploying SOA on a significant extent and is finding that it is giving business value, it is delivering return on investment. That, that I guess, is the, is the message that you're giving us there, Shah. Yes. Okay. We actually have a, we have a, a strategic SOA transformation program and, uh, you know, that program leveraging SOA has definitely helped us with the uh, uh, delivering more business value. Okay, thanks uh, for, for, for that input. Um, Marty, could I ask you next to, uh, to, to share some thoughts on uh, examples of SOA delivering business value? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Chris. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, and I echo uh, what Shar said earlier. Um, what I wanted to add is just kind of extend what uh, Shar had said. Um, it not only brings value to your partners, but bringing value back to the business by exposing a lot of your internal services to external parties to actually innovate for you. So when Char talked about partners being able to take advantage of what's been done at American Express, I'm sure American Express has also been able to see value by partners being able to innovate off of the services that are offered by um, American Express. So I think that that extension from SOA into being able to not just manage everything that you have internally to your business, 
um, but expose that business value elsewhere and allow other people um, to, to drive change for you uh, is, is very valuable um, as well. Okay, so it's not just um, not just delivering value to the business itself, but because it enables the business to expose uh, its its capabilities as services, it's it's delivering uh, value uh, to other partners in the in the ecosystem. We could say exactly, um, and also um, just quickly on that is driving that back to um, American Express as well, and allowing the partners to innovate for them. Um, to allow those services to be offered in ways that maybe American Express hadn't thought of. Okay, so that's uh, giving giving a, a loop of uh, or, or or a virtuous circle, shall we say, of uh, of uh, value add. Gerard, would you like to 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 go next? Yeah, d definitely, and I, I I would even like to take this uh, one step uh, further. Uh, because because in this context, I would like to differentiate between. So uh, old school, so uh, new school, new school, uh, in the sense that uh, the focus of so in the past was mainly limited in restructuring IT facilities, uh, and that was mainly to, as, as, as we saw, uh, prevent applicative uh, duplications, and by doing so, reducing costs and improve stability and provide definitely some some service to the business, but. Uh, Although it evolved, it, it kept on, focused on the IT facilities, uh, and it was only the service orientation was only applied to the shaping of the IT organizations. I think what I what I want to take it to is to 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 talk about something like the new school school SOA, in which service orientation is applied in the full perspective of shaping organization. So that means. And also in the business architecture, the service concept uh, is applied uh, in order for the IT SOA to be of real added value. Uh, so here SOA is not limited to purely shaping the IT facilities uh, and is not focused on cost reduction, but it is more about the service delivering of organizations. And, and from that perspective, I have seen SOA delivering business value uh, in an actual situation uh, where we uh, really apply the service concept, concept in reshaping the entire uh, architecture and in Archimate terminology from, from all three layers, business application and technic. Uh, and in, in doing so, we were able to design an application service landscape that was fully aligned with the organizational view on services to be, liver, to be delivered to the outside world. So. I think looking at SOA uh, currently should should also involve shaping uh, the business as a whole with uh, with a service uh, with a service orientation actually, and I think that 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 really is is a step forward uh, to to integrate uh, the IT facilities with 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 the business uh, dynamics. Okay, so you're saying that the, the real value comes uh, when not only the technology but the business is, is service oriented. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so that's a that's a, a good good perspective. Um, Chris, uh, Sundar, can you hear me? No? I think you're you you're, you're now off mute. Could would you like to share a few thoughts? Okay, um, thanks for uh, organizing the seminar uh, the, the webinar. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to extend uh, what uh, Marty and uh, um, uh, as well as uh, Gerard explained. Um, another uh, uh, important uh, thing I noticed is uh, the creation of the services also extends for uh, the new and emerging multiple channels like social, mobile, uh, and, and cloud-based um, service re rendition um, by taking some of the internal services that need to be exposed for uh, consumption by consumers uh, and also with the proper securities and controls uh, to partners as well um, so that the smartphone ecosystem as well as the tablets and other uh, um, uh, devices could be enabled as well um, with the similar same service instead of recreating services again and again. This uh, emphasizes reuse as well as uh, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to extend to the um, a mobile app uh, and uh, social uh, channel scenarios. 
Okay, so that's that's a topic which we might go into in a bit more depth as as we go further. The the way that uh, SOA is used in in combination with with new technologies. Uh, Ali, do you do you have uh, examples of of SOA delivering business value that you can share with us? Um, yes. Um, hi uh, everyone. Hi Chris. Um, so delivering business value, I think uh, one of the critical things is that um, you know the business outcomes need to happen. And if you want a business outcome to happen, it needs to happen at a given point in time when the business promises some functionality or capability. Remember, let's say it's a bank that uh, where you can take a picture of your uh, check and it gets deposited in your account, or if there's a claim that needs to happen, you're right there at a scene of, uh, God forbid, an accident, and you can take a picture of the accident and start the claim process immediately. So. A lot of these, um, a, a lot of what we have in terms of SOA was the ability to expose business capability, business services that were business relevant, business significant capabilities uh, from an IT perspective. And this exposure has led to various different technologies uh, maturing and extending SOA, but fundamentally they all are grounded in the best practices that we've been uh, experiencing over the past 10, 15 years around SOA. And what that does is it enables the achievement of business value by uh, not only exposing a set of services, but by integrating them with a lot of these uh, more current technologies and trends, such as the examples that I uh, provided. Uh, so whether you choose to use a very light form of implementation of SOA, like a RESTful API, or you would like to use a more, uh, you know, transaction-safe kind of uh, implementation, such as uh, SOAP or, or uh, more traditional kinds of uh, message interaction, all of these have their place in the enterprise and across the ecosystem and they all can deliver a certain degree of business value because fundamentally services and SOA uh, align themselves with a portfolio of services that are the, uh, the capabilities that the business cares about, that relies on or expects either from a provider or consumer perspective. And so if the business can provide the services uh, in a ready fashion, so that others can expose, explore, and uh, leverage them, then it can deliver greater business value. And we've been seeing that um, you know, across the board in different industries where SOA has been an enabler so that business can reach those business outcomes and thus deliver business value. Okay. Now that's uh, a good perspective. Um, timeliness of, of, of value is, is crucial. Let's um, move on to the next question, if we may. Uh, it's often said that a major benefit of SOA is agility. So can we start this one, uh, uh, please, with, uh, with Marty? Can you take us through what happens in an enterprise that uses SOA when someone wants to implement a new business idea and how this is different from what happens in enterprises that don't use SOA? Okay, great. Yeah, so let's, let's take Ali's example of being able to upload a claim or take a picture of your check and, uh, you know, submit that. Uh, in, in times past when you didn't, or if a business didn't really implement SOA, they wouldn't have really been able to open up their um, architecture and open up their stovepipe systems, right? Maybe their system was built that you go to the bank and you give the bank check over and they're able to deposit the check there and then enter the information into their system, right? And they have a very heavy, you know, client server type integration for security reasons. And that's the only way that you can actually enter a deposit into the system. Um, when you follow SOA principles and you understand all of the policy and you understand all of the pieces, um, you're able to start breaking break up some of those um, stovepipe systems and start to allow the ability for different angles for that information to be entered into a system. So if you take the check example, now I'm able to put a 
check into an ATM and it's able to read it and put that information into the, you know, into the network and cash the check for me, um, you know, by opening that up and opening up a service that is a deposit service, right, where that might have been in a tightly coupled um, scenario before. Now that's loosely coupled because, you know, service orientation says, all right, the business service is actually getting the money into the bank. It doesn't matter how it happens. So let's expose that service. Um, and that that's really one of the biggest differences between looking at the service that you offer and having the business say, okay, well, what is it that I offer to the community, to my customers? Um, and what is it that I can do, you know, that's a service, right, that might not be part of my overarching business process necessarily, um, but it really is one of those services that I can offer and offer in many different ways. And then people, then I go back to, you know, beating the drum on innovation because now people are able to say, okay, well, I want to be able to take a picture of my check and send that information in. Where you have a client server, that's very difficult because it's not, you know, ready for mobile technology and things like that. But if you have that service open, then I take the picture of the check. It reads the information that I need. It sends that information into the service and the deposit happens. So that that's the difference to me is the, really that breaking apart of those you know stovepipe applications and allowing you know open information flow. Okay, um, Ali, do you agree? Is that a sort of fair development of of your example from from your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that's uh, that's right on. And really, what we have is we have an economy of uh, of services essentially. Uh, some people refer to it as an API economy because gradually over time, uh, you know, the, the, the key thing I, I want to make sure everybody um, kind of I, – I share at least my experiences that everybody understands the, from, from my perspective, and I think, um, you know, we're, we're all kind of on the same page here, is that foundationally service-oriented architecture has paved the way for all these other technologies to enable themselves. And fundamentally, what's happening is that we are reaching beyond the, the silos or the organizational boundaries of an enterprise, and we're entering into an ecosystem of what I think the open group calls the boundless flow of information, in a sense. And that allows companies and third parties to interact with one another, to compose solutions, that would otherwise be very difficult to compose. Um, and uh, one of the critical things, I think, is the ability for us to uh, expose the capabilities that we have uh, in our own organizations, whatever domain, uh, whether we're in retail or distribution or healthcare or provider, financial services, as we expose this into the ecosystem, whether it's and by the way, there are two ecosystems. There's the internal developer ecosystem, which is extremely important. Maybe 60% initially will be in the enterprise, inside the enterprise. And then gradually, we have more and more uptake externally in third parties in the external ecosystem. And they will leverage and develop these um, exposed services and combine them um, in unintended ways to provide new innovations and new innovative solutions that uh, that can you know that can open the doors to new partnerships, new markets, and new products and services. The key thing is the ability for us to foundationally create a, pl a uh, portfolio of services that are business aligned, understand the dependencies between these services, expose them internally and externally in a secure way. Uh, within the, the, the two ecosystems of internal and external ecosystems and enable this partner ecosystem to start developing applications based on these exposed services. Okay, thanks, Ali. So the, the service portfolio comes out there as a, as a crucial tool in implementing new business ideas by taking existing services. Um, Chris, I, this is Gerard. I, I would like to add something. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because uh, I, I think uh, what what uh, 
what was was mentioned, mentioned uh, by Ali uh, triggers uh, something at my side. As you may understand, I'm more from the business uh, side, and I I think we are at at, at the uh, at the moment in time that we should leave the idea that there is a separate IT department, fully separated uh, in a centralized ways and separated from the business function, uh, and that that would be able to provide full entrepreneurial flexibility. Yeah, so as as Ali mentioned, there is a lot of uh, uh, improvement done eh, by, by creating those services within the IT environment, but I think uh, by, by uh, including that service uh, uh, mind in, in, in the business, in structuring the business, uh, is, is a real enabler for, for organizational flexibility. Uh, and I think the work group so far for, for business technology is, is indeed about uh, explaining that that, that that service orientation should be included in the, in the entire setup. Uh, of the business uh, for for those s service orientation already available in the IT environment to be a full uh, 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 profit uh, to the to the to the internal and external organizations, which in itself also should become more and more uh, service oriented. As stated before, we are living in, in a service uh, uh, or, yeah in, in a service environment. In, in itself, so I, I think it, to to even uh, leverage the, the the abilities of a service-oriented IT uh, even more is to to introduce that uh, also in, this, in this, the total setup of business because new ideas are not only uh, supported by new IT facilities but also by uh, an agility in the business itself to operate it. Okay, thanks. Chris, uh, if, Chris, if I could add to that, I Please see that there, that, is yeah. a, there is a UDDI question posted on the panel as well. Um, let me just add to that that at the practice level, let's say in an enterprise like Amex that leverages so well, with business capabilities expressed as services and registered in the enterprise service registry and repository, we can more easily leverage these services in implementing new business ideas, shorter time, higher quality, all the good things, lower cost. So before we actually embark on developing the capabilities needed for a new business idea, you know, the service registry and repository is searched for available services, you know, which can be leveraged in the development of the new or enhanced products. Chris, may I, may I quickly just add something on that point? So it's the idea of implementing a new business idea, right, uh, using SOA. So basically a new business idea or a business idea is usually a composite. That composite can leverage the existing business capabilities that we have in our service portfolio that is aligned between business and IT. And that composer, that composition can occur uh, and that new business idea therefore gets developed the new products and services uh, that is um, you know in need of development so uh, it, how is that different from enterprises that don't have SOA well they don't have a set of uh, business aligned services that are in the catalog or the uh, portfolio of services that can be exposed and, and, and composed together to create these new innovative uh, or just new compositions that provide these new products and services. The critical thing is the management of that portfolio and the governance of that portfolio of services, which is between business and IT, two in a box, they work together, which is tough in many organizations because you have to break down some organizational barriers and cultural issues where business and IT have to come together. But the answer is, you know, how, how is it different from an enterprise that doesn't use SOA? they will find it increasingly difficult and if not altogether impossible to expose their capabilities beyond the organization in ways that other companies can compose and therefore new business solutions and implementation of new business ideas becomes extremely restricted if not infeasible so back that, to you chris that's an interesting point ali so what you're saying there is not only is so uh, enabling the implementation of new business ideas, it's actually enabling new ideas to emerge uh, because there is uh, the possibility of, of, of using, of one company using services exposed by, by another company. 
Could I ask you all to just comment very briefly then on this question of the relation of SOA uh, real, helping enterprises realize the potential of new technologies such as cloud computing, social, uh, mobile computing we've already heard mentioned, uh, big data analysis, the Internet of Things and so on. Um, can you just say a few words on, on how SOA can help enterprise realize uh, the potential of new technologies? Um, Sundar, uh, if you if you can hear, you you missed out on the last question. Um, is there, can you can you start us off on this one? Um, can you hear me? Um, yep. Yes, can. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, just uh, you know, in terms of uh, emerging technologies, um, the way of uh, organizing and uh, orientation, you know, towards having service catalogs for many of the backend services. Um, that we talked about the checks uh, in a bank or uh, some retail uh, point of sale system. Um, now it allows for leveraging the similar service that's developed across multiple channels, like uh, uh, like the uh, smartphones or the tablets, um, as well as uh, you know rendering it uh, through the social uh, um, uh, channels as well, um, and uh, reach a mass consumer base using cloud services rendition of the same services. Um, so this allows for uh, um, not only you know, uh, the efficiency in creating those services uh, and quickly doing orchestration of these services across multiple uh, applications that can reach uh, uh, the end users uh, and your customers and partners in a very uh, nimble manner, um, which uh, has not been thought uh, before you know, uh, in, in the client server arena you know, that uh, Needed to, and, and and in terms of agility, you know, it also increase um, uh, provides a, a good platform for developers to now uh, have higher productivity uh, instead of just uh, 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 you know writing component uh, integrations. Now uh, you know the services are uh, just uh, used in a plug and play mode. You know across uh, multiple uh, uh, ways of delivering the application to the end users and and partners. Okay, thanks, thanks, Sundar. Um, Gerard, do you have anything quickly to add to that? Uh, yeah, again, just just to stress the idea, I think organizations are confronted with new technologies uh, and, and, can, and that can create new business ID. And I think that stresses that an organization should be should not have a separate IT function, but that more IT knowledge should also be available. Uh, within the management of, of, of business development, because eh? actually new ideas is about business development. And having such an, uh, an holistic uh, service orientation, eh? also from a business perspective, uh, where, in which you have business services defined uh, uh, with, with implicitly related to the uh, IT services with, with functional requirements, but also with aspects like security, flexibility, and availability, confidentiality from a business perspective uh, makes it easier to, to separate certain parts of a business that can be outsourced uh, in the cloud and, and also defines boundaries and restrictions to it and also enables uh, putting up SLAs uh, and so on. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, that, that, that having that all uh, in mind even uh, improves uh, the, the, the outsourcing and, and uh, using all the, the new ideas and possibilities. So I think sufficient IT knowledge and, and perception at, at a management level where business developments take place is also a prerequisite. Okay, thanks Gerard. Um, I, I know not everyone has spoken on this, but unless uh, Ali or Shah you have uh, uh, something of uh, that you can't, you know, you can't keep back from saying. Let's move on to the next question because we are getting short of time, uh, and that is the Chris, question: can, the role I of can. business technologist, uh, Chris, and I whether can, that uh, role is a uh, I, can a, I can give a concrete example on that. That you know would definitely help uh, illuminate that. You know when. When we have the SOA services in place, uh, you know, for example, in the digital payment space, you know, Amex initially launched a pay with points capability that was for online, for the web channel. 
you know, we had developed the SOA services to enable that. Now, with the mobile becoming a prime platform, we actually leverage those same capabilities, you know, that people could pay for their taxi rides in New York City, you know, pay with points, and then extended that to pay with your pay, pay with points in Uber cars as well. You know, so this is an example. When you have those SOA services in place, it you know becomes much easier to realize the potential of new technology. Okay, so that's a good concrete example of SOA enabling new technologies. Um, do, is there, do, do you have any comments on, on potentially the, how how that plays out within the um, the business and technical departments? Would you have a would you have that implemented within an IT department or with a business area using business technologists? Um, is, how, how would you see um, the the way these new business capabilities being implemented within Amex? Well, uh, you know, I would say uh, with Amex ongoing focus on innovation and agility, and you know, of course, recognizing the impact that technology can have on driving increased business and customer value, you know, that traditional business technology divide is really more, I would say, of a legacy at Amex. We actually have been adopting a rather product orientation and delivery approach as opposed to, you know, the traditional project approach. And in this model, the product owners you know, which uh, are made of a combination of business and technology people, they actually act as business technologies. You know, they identify new user stories, they maintain the product backlog and so forth, and uh, ensuring that existing SOA services are leveraged, uh, you know, and also to introduce new services it's actually an essential facet of that product ownership. You know, so right, I would so you're say talking about me, combined business and technology product teams? Yes. Okay, which is a, yes. a very a very different emphasis. Ali, how, how yes. do you see this playing out? Do you, do you see a, a business technology role emerging or maybe, as Shah is describing, teams combining a business and technology capability. Yes, I, I would definitely agree with that. The latter is really, it, it, the business technologist is a rare creature, and uh, either they are becoming rapidly extinct due to uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> ozone layer disappearing, which I'm saying tongue-in-cheek, but um, realistically, we want to have two in a box so the business analyst and the IT uh, architect would be working together from the very beginning of the development life cycle or the evolution life cycle. Initially, the business analyst would be prime and uh, collaborating with the IT architect, and then gradually they, as the project gradually moves into uh, more of a detailed design kind of phase, uh, even if you're doing successive agile iterations, right, uh, you need to do some of that upfront activity. And the, the combination, the two-in-a-box paradigm of the business analyst and the IT architect is critical to the success of any development program, uh, especially SOA. Um, and what SOA does is essentially we're, we're trying to mine out business capabilities that the business has locked up in their heads and the, the IT capabilities that is locked within the IT systems and try to max, map and max, mix and match them together, essentially. Lots of M's going on here. But basically pulling out both of those, trying to map them together and build a portfolio of services and dependencies between services based on that. Critical to that is the collaboration between 
business and IT. And business and IT will not collaborate with one another unless the individuals start collaborating with one another in a two-in-a-box fashion. And management intervenes and designates the fact that from a governance perspective and from a project methodology perspective, they need to have these roles working together in order to succeed. And in fact, the first question that was raised, the ROI question, in order to maximize or even achieve return on investment, you need to have the collaboration between these two parties. And if we don't, to the extent to which we have it, the organization is more mature, let's say, on the OSIM scale. And to the extent that they don't have it, the organization is going to be less mature. Okay. I have a very short addition to this, uh, if, if, if I may, uh, Gerard. Yes. Uh, I think it, it's even more than, than collaboration between business and IT. I think really uh, there should be more and more responsibility on business side uh, over the IT facilities. So I think it, it, it would be even more that, that there is more direct uh, management of certain IT facilities critical to business uh, agility. Uh, on the direct management of, uh, of, of uh, yeah, of, of the so-called business management. Uh, so I think it's it's even more than just collaboration. I think it should be a shift of certain IT facilities and the management of IT facilities into that operational organization. And that would in in itself be more a role than uh, mentioned here as a business technologist. But I, I think it should be a more a general uh, 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 yeah, maturing of IT uh, use. And I'd like to add on to that too. Uh, this is Marty Chris. Is just you know when when Gerard talked about earlier of really reorganizing the business as well around those service oriented principles, it then gives you that ability to have more of a business technologist, someone that's you know understanding just that business capability, which might be or business service really instead of just the whole entire capability, right? Because now we have a lot of generalists in a lot of ways, but if you have someone that understands that area understands a bit into the technology and really understands the business um, you can start to get that you know two in a box in one person um, you know it's it's difficult but when you reorganize your business around around those principles then that becomes possible uh, I think that's one of the places where SOA you know if you read the original SOA books and you look at them you know they talk about being a cultural shift in a way of actually re-looking at your business and then that should drive change into your um, IT. Uh, it ended up being, because I think probably because of having architecture in the name, it became this IT initiative, you know, of a silver bullet. And if as much flexibility as you build in the back end, if you don't have those plugs into each of those different business services and business capabilities and understand that you need to start making those changes at the business level, um, you're really, you know, you really handcuff yourself. So in order to kind of open that up, once you start to organize your business around your services, uh, then you can maybe create more, you know, instead of them going extinct, we might be able to bring back a business technologist because of the way that you've structured your business. Okay. And um, just to supplement, supplement uh, what uh, uh, Marty was well, saying, yeah. uh, we also noticed, we also noticed, you know, business architects, you know, stepping up to the, uh, you know, two in a box, becoming uh, one person with the subject matter expertise from uh, related industries like automotive retail and, and so on. So, uh, Chris, are you inviting controversy, or would you like us to keep this completely amicable? <laughs> uh, no, no, controversy is good. Um, I'm just, I'm just uh, a sort of uh, aware of the fact that uh, there are some good questions coming in from the audience as well. But let's let's pursue this thread. Uh, if you have a, if you have something controversial to put forward, then let, let's hear that point. And, and I oh. hope also that 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 all of the panelists are looking at the, 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 the huge number of questions that are coming in on the chat. And you can see um, a whole range of things, governance, for example, relation to enterprise architecture, portfolios, uh, metrics uh, coming up in, in the questions that are being asked. So if, 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 if in your answers um, you, you, you can build on some of those interesting points, that would be good too. But go on, Ali. Um, well, uh, what, what I was going to suggest was, um, you know, the, the idea of a single person having both these capabilities 
is a rarity. And, you know, there are these individuals. I mean, I, I know a, a number of them. But the critical thing I think that we're missing here is the political nature of the discussion. We tend to think, we technologists, <laughs> or some of us who are technologists, tend to think, even if we're on the business side, we think if it's myopically on that side, we tend to forget the fact that the politics of the equation are critical to our success here. The idea of having one person, no matter what side they're on, you cannot have them um, represent, technically you can have them represent the business and IT subject matter expertise, but from a political and organizational perspective, you need representation. And that representation needs to collaborate overtly within a governance framework at an enterprise level, ideally for more mature organizations, and for less mature organizations, they're going to start out at the project level. And they're not going to have official governance. They're going to have kind of a bootstrapping governance capability. But the key thing is that there are representatives sitting at the table from both sides of the equation, from the IT side of the equation and the business subject matter expertise. Uh, I do agree, however, that you can't have generalists I mean, yes, you can have generalists at a steering committee level, but the business analysts and the IT architects that we're talking about are very specific subject matter experts in specific areas of, you know, detailed, you know, let's say consumer retail um, and, you know, uh, you know, connected car or whatever. And they will drive the discussion of business capabilities and develop the business portfolio of capabilities with the IT person. So I think it's more of an organizational challenge, change management discussion, and a political discussion. That's why I think we need to have the two-in-a-box concept, although the idea of developing the business technologist as an elite group is a noble, is a noble endeavor. Okay, so that's brought out a very good point then, Ali. And in fact, I suggest as, as, as time is moving on, and that is really something of a crucial point, and also governance is a point that's come out in a lot of the audience questions. Can I ask um, the other panelists to comment on, given that you have a, uh, and perhaps Shah, you could lead us off with this, given that you have a combined business and technology team um, uh, working on a product basis, how is that organized from a governance perspective? How do you uh, agree on what should be developed as services uh, and and uh, and govern the 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 the, uh, the the architecture development. So uh, you know, ensuring that services are proposed and introduced as part of these uh, capturing the repeatable business activities you know, is an essential part of that exercise. And, uh, you know, I would say in the digital economy these days, uh, it would be rare that we talk to a business person that does not think of the digital economy. I mean, if you think of everything we do, apply for a loan, a credit card, pay, and so forth has been digitized so heavily that it's kind of, you know, not having a digital mindset uh, would be an odd thing in a sense. So for enabling SOA, you know, it's critical that as, you know, those user stories are sorted out, uh, prioritized and so forth, and then they are looked at for taking those to the product level, you know, we look at those capabilities that are needed for those scenarios and think of, is this a repeatable business activity that can be proposed and developed as a service? So I would say that has, you know, that needs to become an inherent part of the agile and product ownership exercise. Okay, so the, the, the definition of the services is, 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 or, or is a crucial aspect and the governance, uh, governance processes must, uh, must enable this. Um, 
Marty, Sundar, Gerard, would one of any of you like to 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 add to this? Um, Chris, um, um, you know, uh, as he as he pointed out, you know, especially the uh, initial stages of service definition, you know, and then um, you know, not repeating um, service proliferation, creating the same service over and over again for different uh, purposes. Uh, you know, these are all things that. Uh, um, you know, need to be well governed. You know, uh, in terms of uh, service initiation um, uh, during the portfolio uh, stage itself. So, so it, it kind of uh, uh, helps uh, both uh, you know business and IT uh, collaboration, and, and um, also you know some of the uh, business technology and architects that we uh, see in some some of the industries. They are getting added, especially in the connected uh, vehicle and other places. Uh, they are added to the as part of the extended business team. Um, you know, uh, especially doing agile uh, uh, approach and agile methodology in terms of software development practice. Um, so, so I think uh, you know that's a very good uh, thing. You know, in terms of uh, bringing um, uh, governance to the forefront, uh, so that things are managed much before uh, they are um, uh, even conceived of, and also the, uh, uh, they, uh, during the continue during the development and deployment stages. And a good example that uh, Star was talking about was the, uh, leveraging the same service uh, from a web uh, front end to to the um, uh, other devices, you know, the, the tablets and and, and and phones as well as other. Uh, it may also morph into microservices, you know, in terms of um, um, lots of other devices and sensors that, that are coming into the play, you know, in utility in other industries as well. Okay, so. Microservices should be will will be the topic for for another webinar. Um, I'd like actually because we have uh, uh, only a little time left to to wrap up with a final question. Um, can I ask each of you to to give us 30 seconds on what the future should look like? How should SOA evolve for the future to help enterprises deliver greater business value? Um, Ali, would you like to to give us uh, 30 seconds on this? Yes. Um, I think the critical thing there is that there are trends going on, mobile, API management, cloud, software as a service, et cetera. We need to make sure that we align ourselves with these trends and recognize, this is a key thing, we, we need to recognize that many, if not most of these trends, are evolution and extensions of SOA. So what does that mean? It's not just, it means that the best practices we've been developing in the SOA world should be leveraged when we do API management, when we build mobile applications, when we go to cloud. And I think that is the critical success factor in leveraging the foundation of best practices as we move into these new technologies. Okay, so SOA is a, is a secure, is a good foundation. Uh, Gerard, do you, do you have anything to, to add on that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I stated before, uh, organizations should use service orientation throughout the shaping of the organization. And, and it should, in that sense, become part of the DNA of an entire organization and not only of the, well, the currently more separated IT departments. I think, and here we can definitely leverage the experience that we gained in IT on service orientation. But I think it would be a mistake to think that applying service orientation only in, in, in an IT context in separate IT departments will allow us to fully uh, prov provide that additional business value that, that is expected. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I can only stress the, the importance of uh, evolving and, and, and using a more holistic view on service orientation to be of full profit. Uh, in this sense. Okay. Thanks, Gerard. Sundar, do you have uh, anything on this topic? Um, Chris, yeah, Chris. Um, you know, it's, um, just uh, on the on the on the foundational aspects on the best practices uh, from SOBA, it's also um, uh, a journey in an enterprise uh, that's evolving to be, um, an, uh, you know, into the digital economy uh, in the world um, to basically uh, having enterprise digital services, um, you know, across. All, all segments and all markets, you know, just not only in marketing and other lines of business, overall enterprise services uh, uh, in terms of the digital um, uh, digitization that's happening around uh, many of the industries. Okay.
Okay. Uh, Shah, do you uh, have uh, have a crystal ball that can forecast how SOA should evolve? <laughs> I, I wish. But a couple of areas that I would like to highlight, uh, APIs are now a critical area for an enterprise because it can, it can actually enable potential growth and added business value. So I would say evolving SOA to deliver and utilize APIs in an agile manner is a prime area of enhancement for SOA. Um, also, the second one that I can think of, um, SOA enablement uh, of new technologies such as uh, you know, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, let's say for example, OpenShift, OpenStack, you know, I would say that's another prime area for uh, evolving SOA. Uh, for the non-technical areas, uh, you know, definitely I would say introduction of an industry a standard training and certification, SOA training and certification, is definitely still an area for SOA evolution. Okay, that's some good thoughts there. And uh, uh, Marty, can can I ask you to have the final word on this? Yeah, I think that we you know do need to understand that you know SOA has really helped the IT landscape change, right? And we really need to evolve and drive into the business more than we have, I think, in the past. Um, you know, that whole idea of service orientation in the business, allowing a business capability to, you know, a business area to actually just go out and get software as a service and go completely around the IT department, right? That's going to happen more and more as more and more things get, you know, set up out in the cloud and out in out there in general. So I think that we really need to be aware of that, aware that the IT landscape is changing, that business has, you know, more control over that you know, going forward. And, you know, we should embrace that and bring, as Gerard said, all of the wealth of, you know, with the wealth of experiences that we've learned over service orientation over the past, you know, 10, 15 years uh, you know, to the business. Okay, so I think that's a, a great thought to, to end on. And I'd like to thank uh, Shah, Marty, Sundar, Gerard, and Ali for their uh, thoughts, uh, sharing those with us. Uh, from, in some excellent answers to questions and discussions. And I'd like to thank everybody who participated. Thank you all for your attention, and we hope to see you at the next webinar. Thank you very much.